It all began in 1883 in the old main building on the University of Colorado Boulder campus. Two professors and two students in two rooms. The genesis of the School of Medicine. In 1924, the School of Medicine moved into a quadrangle of red brick buildings at 9th Avenue and Colorado Boulevard. The campus grew as its health science offerings grew. By the turn of the 20th century, the school was on the move again, this time to the old Fitzsimmons Army Base with its historic hospital, now surrounded by a state-of-the-art health care city that is the Anschutz Medical Campus in Aurora. Tenacious and courageous from the beginning, the University of Colorado Denver School of Medicine is succeeding despite chronic financial challenges. That's because the real story of the School of Medicine is its people. My name is Stephen Davies and I'd like to thank the University of Colorado Denver School of Medicine for providing me with, with such a fantastic research facility for conducting my uh, research on repair of spinal cord injuries. Dr. Stephen Davies brought his world-renowned research lab to Colorado when he learned of the remarkable opportunities at the new Anschutz Medical Campus. When I entered the uh, field of uh, uh, central nervous system regeneration uh, back in the late 90s, uh, it was a, a, a field that people thought in general uh, wasn't going anywhere, no one was able to get uh, uh, regeneration of the, of the spinal cord. However, I conducted some experiments where we transplanted adult n neurons directly into adult uh, central nervous system. It's the real it was a Frankenstein experiment, adult to adult transplantation. And, and uh, to our great surprise, we found that uh, uh, adult neurons were able to send new nerve fibers from one side of the brain to the other in, in, in just uh, one week. Public awareness of spinal cord injury grew exponentially when Christopher Reeve, known for the movie Superman, suffered a devastating accident. I was only 29 years of age and a graduate student when Christopher Reeve had his spinal cord injury. Uh, so at that time, the new technologies that, that we've now developed were, obviously weren't available. Uh, but uh, he, the foundation that, that he uh, set up uh, has been instrumental in, in allowing us to, to conduct our research, to develop these new therapies. And I think if he was alive today, there would be a far better prognosis for his gaining recovery of function again, uh, particularly, uh, hopefully, with, with the uh, use of the new therapies that we're developing. So what we've been doing is developing a, a new stem cell technology to make the right kind of early support cells called astrocytes that we can then transplant into a spinal cord injury and promote regeneration and recovery. Astrocytes are almost one of the forgotten cells of the nervous system. It's estimated that 70% of the nervous system is, is, is made of astrocytes, star cells, and uh, very little is known about different types of astrocyte. But we know that they form scar tissue after a spinal cord injury, and we also know that they're involved in, in onset of neuropathic pain, uh, a major problem that can arise uh, when somebody uh, has a severe traumatic injury, spinal cord injury. So we are the first lab to be able to make different types, different kinds of astrocyte from stem cells. They're called glial restrictive precursors. What we think we've discovered is that it's a subtype of astrocyte that's causing the problem. Not all, all astrocytes will promote pain after spinal cord injury, and there's a good type of astrocyte that will give us all the recovery all, uh, uh, without any, uh, any problems, all gain and no pain. We have seen remarkable levels of recovery of locomotion in rats that received our GDA cells. So we're, we're uh, at the moment quietly confident that we've discovered what could be considered the gold standard cell for promoting repair of the injured spinal cord and that we are now know we can make the human form of these cells and we are uh, hoping that these cells will therefore translate to clinical trial and be as effective in humans as we've seen uh, these cells can be in rats. My belief and my hope for Dr. Davies' research is that I will walk again someday. I believe that his science from bench to bedside will allow me a full recovery from the accident that rendered me a quadriplegic eight years ago. The new technologies that we're developing for repairing spinal cord injury, uh, they're not only applicable to the spinal cord, they're also applicable to repair of the whole central nervous system. So we are also uh, investigating the, the potential of our uh, cells, our GDA cells and Decron for uh, repair of uh, stroke, 
or for uh, promoting recovery in neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And so in general, in looking at repairing the nervous system, repairing the spinal cord, we're developing new therapies for, for repairing uh, all damage to the nervous system. The goal of all this hard work, uh, uh, my hard work and that of my research team, is to develop new therapies that can really make a difference to, to uh, people's lives, those that have suffered, uh, suffered severe spinal cord injuries. So uh, I will die a, a happy man if uh, these therapies are translated to clinical trial and prove to be truly effective at alleviating the terrible suffering of, of spinal cord injuries.